Hello and welcome to Indianomics. Central bankers as a group are facing some of their biggest challenges. Initially, in the face of COVID, they were forced to cut interest rates, create liquidity, buy government bonds to finance large fiscal deficits. Then, as inflation surged in every country, they were under pressure to increase interest rates. And now the very increase in interest rates is creating financial instability problems. For some emerging markets, there is the added problem of currency weakness and capital outflows when interest rates rise in the mother economy, the US economy. So how should central bankers think when faced with not dilemmas, but trilemmas? Let me invite the veteran central banker who coined the term trilemma, Dr. Y.V. Reddy, former governor, Reserve Bank of India. Dr. Reddy, thank you very much, sir, for joining me today in this discussion. Uh, well, let me start actually with thank the... Thank you, Lassar. Thank you very much. Let me start with the U.S. problem, sir. It is there that uh, the Fed has been faced with the problem of uh, financial instability and yet uh, the incomplete fight against inflation. Uh, first, what should be the copybook? What should a central banker's central banker do when faced with this dilemma? I believe uh, that basically you have to think in terms of, in, in different terms, in terms of money. It's not the international, it's the international monetary system mm -hmm. that's at the origin. Mm -hmm. It's not the inflation or instability as such. Mm -hmm. The international monetary system you see, in any, in, in any global situation, each institution wants to avoid risk. Mm. The regulator also wants to avoid risk, but still, and ensure that no ex unnecessary risk is taken. How do you handle that? You handle that by high, insisting, by, by self, or by, by prescription, make sure that you have enough risk-free assets, right? That's right. And what is the risk-free asset in the world normally? It is US dollar or gold. Yes. Or Kushnayana. Yes. So what happens is there has been a scarcity of non-risk assets, oh. rather safe assets. They call it safe assets. Yes. There has been a terrible scarcity of safe assets in the recent past. And the safe asset, therefore, my problem is you better concentrate on the safe asset problem. Okay. Gold is there. Okay. Other, than, other than gold, where is it? Mm. What's the safe asset? Its value should not... See, a, a safe asset is something which, whose value does not vary too much. Na? Yes. Then only it's safe. Safe okay. is not only just stolen away, yeah. one part. Mm. So my point is the excess dependence on the U.S. Treasury bills as the safest assets other than gold in the world mm. is responsible for this. Okay. Yeah. I, now, how do you bring about that stability confidence is a bigger problem. Mm. Because the leveraged world is very difficult to bring back now. Mm. Yes. So I may have, you may have to have special, explicable, regulatory dispensations. Mm. Uh, Let me put it, I don't know whether I make it clear. Mm. See, I, I may have, I'm reminded of Asian crisis time, bro. Mm. So what we do is, what we say is, look, this, I, I reduce the risk weight for this. We can have more, this, mm. for purpose of revaluation, to enable them to have a reduced capital, but it's temporary, mm. till particular date. Okay. So my point is that, that's the only way now. Mm. It has to be ad hoc, it has to be contextual, it cannot be generalized. Okay. Generalized, the solution is going to be more critical and more complex. Okay. You cannot okay. design, it's just okay. it's not possible to design. Okay. So temporary regulatory uh, <laughs> uh, incent, uh, regulatory SOPs will have to be given, is what you're saying? It will have to be given to enable the not so, not so safe assets to be considered as safe assets. Okay, okay. So uh, that, that doesn't worry anybody, that shouldn't worry anybody. Okay. Got it. So, so now in the current context, the US Fed has, uh, uh, you know, offered to underwrite the deposits of some of the troubled banks. Uh, do you think this was the right way to go mm. ahead with the problem that they faced? Whether it's, it's, it's desirable or not. It depends on the situation, but in, given the American situation, if they didn't do it, the way, they, the way the depositors panicked, I think it's safer to stop it, whatever the cost. Mm. I know the whole so-called constructive ambiguity. Yes. But even at constructive ambiguity, midnight on that day, I think ambiguity was not possible. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. You, 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 you cannot, you see, uh, you, you, cannot, you cannot deprive a man of the money mm. so easily. Michael said, mm. people forget the father, the mother of the father sooner than the seizure of the money. 
Okay, okay. People forget that the mother okay. of the father oh. than the seizure of the money. Okay, okay. I, I yeah, I get your point. Yeah. Uh, losing money would be uh, serious and therefore the deposits were underwritten. What is your uh, sense about the banking system's organization itself? In, the, in Europe, the number of small banks are very few. This is a problem peculiar only to the United States. So any advice on how banking systems should be organized? Were we fortunate in a way to have public sector banks? Is it good to have some part of your banking system in the public sector? My, my view on this is slightly, it's not public or private. In real life, it's really not public or private, it's public and private. Mm -hmm. But certainly not like 40% private, 50% public. This is a dangerous mix. Okay. In my view, there should be public sector banks full public sector banks, mm. and there should be private sector banks coexisting. Okay. Secondly, those public sector banks should concentrate on specific activities. Mm. Three, the regulator should be able to all... Let me again explain why. You see, in the banking, there's huge incentive to, to, to smoke their activities, mm. smoke attack. Mm. So therefore, the regulatory information, mm. our regulatory information asymmetry, Mm. Information asymmetry given to the regulator by the regulated mm. can be minimized. Okay. By existing the public sector bank, because the governance systems of the public sector banks ensure that you give reasonably good truth. Mm. For regulator, knowing the truth on a continuous basis is one of the most important things. Mm. Secondly, I feel that there are special problems, special sections, mm. and they should be, if necessary, whatever the the commercial cost, the government should reimburse. Mm -hmm. But a good banking system, in, I believe, is one where at least 30% of the total banking system is entirely public sector mm -hmm. and make sure that the governance is good. That would be my... I think I mentioned this in 2000 or something like that, yes. speech. I, I feel... I call it a technical paper. Yes. I still feel strongly about that. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you, you, they, you said this in a paper, uh, speech to the NIBM uh, in uh, 2000 is my memory as well. Okay, uh, so let me just uh, come to the way India has handled the problems. Uh, I, uh, uh, our governor, Shakti Kanta Das, has got a citation uh, as the central banker of uh, the world, I mean, uh, as the best central banker for the year. Uh, and you have endorsed it. You said that he has done an outstanding job in view of the extraordinary challenges he faced and the manner in which he had to negotiate uh, the relationship with the government. Uh, can you elaborate a little more on that? This is high praise, as I would call it. This is uh, Vashishta calling him Brahmarishi. Uh, can you elaborate how, uh, why you admire the way he handled the crisis? I think I can add this. There's nothing secret. I've written uh, to the people who asked me from the jury. There's nothing secret. I believe that a governor has to... It is a governor which has faced perhaps most difficult situations. Mm. And not only, not just international, more important, the domestic. Mm. The type of problems he has faced, it's impossible that he could have managed them without the cooperation of the governor. Mm. The problem with RBI in the, previous, pre, in the few, previous few years was that the government and RBI are supposed to be having problems. And here is a man who comes, despite all the criticism about his being, not being economic and independent, he comes, settles down, quickly repairs the relationship with the government. Please remember, one of the sentences I have written there is that he has collaborated with the government as in the case of all other countries. You see, every country has to operate one of the... One of the things which people forget is independent central bank. First, you must always know that when there is a crisis, you have to be with the government. You cannot go be away from the government. You cannot operate without a crisis. Similarly, you want structural changes in an economy. You cannot amend the law related to banking regulation. A governor cannot mm. amend the Banking Regulation Act without taking the government into confidence. Then how do you bring about the structural uh, changes? Mm. So my point is, structural changes cannot be brought about. Crisis cannot be done by the governor on its own unless they are able to. Incidentally, let me share you the story. Uh, when I was governor, I was against... I wanted, you remember? Mm. I tried that the bonds, yes. MSS. Market yes, stabilization yes, yes. scheme. Market stabilization scheme bonds. When I went to MSS bonds, uh, when I, I approached, the minister said, no, it can't be agreed. By Chief Economic Advisor Ashok Lehri opposed. I said, sir, I don't want independence. 
Okay. I said, why? He said, central bank independence will be compromised. I said, what independence, sir? I don't want independence. And there's a huge capital flow. How can my independence help? The determination of the government and the, and, and the yes. governor that there is a serious problem that we'll tackle is alone that helps. Okay. I hope I didn't give a long answer. Yes. No, no, but it is most helpful, sir. Uh, but I'm not or done with asking you questions on, uh, uh, you know, the Indian situation itself and how we are tackling uh, the dilemma uh, between growth and uh, 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 inflation, as well as, of course, the external challenge. I will have to take a brief break. I'm coming back with more questions. Welcome back to this special chat with Dr. Y. V. Reddy, former Reserve Bank of India governor, on the current challenges faced by central bankers all over the world. Uh, well, Dr. Reddy, because if you remember, uh, some time back, Joseph Stiglitz said that U.S. would not have gone through the Lehman crisis if uh, Dr. Reddy was the Fed chairman at that time. Dr. Reddy, thank you very much for your patience, sir. Uh, let, let me broaden the discussion to the global situation now. There is a fight against inflation which has had to perhaps take a bit of a backseat because of the instability problems. And then separately, there are also geopolitical issues that have cropped up. Uh, what is your assessment of the global financial system? Do you think it still runs the risk of collapses, sudden collapses? Uh, in fact, I think we are on a very difficult ground there, Ratha. My own, I'm not very well informed as you know more than a decade old. Mm. But sitting back, I have this serious discomfort. Because if you know in the history also, one global monetary system are, cannot be simply replaced peacefully. Very mm. difficult. Now China is a threaten. And therefore, this can be sort of maybe a part of a disruption. Mm. But the, my fear is, USA could be replaced by India, or China, or whatever it is, mm. if it had capacities. Mm. My submission is that the U.S. dollar is so penetrated to all instruments, virtually it is equated to trade. It's not just a trade. It's equated to everything. Yes. Now, my point is, again, going back safe assets. Where do you get the safe assets? Safe assets is gold. After the gold, what happened? U.S. dollar. Uh, after the gold, what is the safe asset? U.S. dollar. Now, the problem is what happened in 2008. Please remember, when, USA, when, US, when Korea got into trouble, they went to U.S.A. for dollar. That's Though there was an agreement with China. Yeah. So my point is, China is long away from being recognized as a global currency, mm. in spite of their SDR, just, uh, just un, uh, un, un, uh, unbundle the numbers, you mm. unbundle the number of trade, investment, instruments. See, basically, let me ask you another question. Alata, would you like to go and settle down in China? No, sir. No. I would much prefer yeah. Let India. me ask you a question. Will you go yes. and settle in China? I will go and write a contract, financial contract in China now. Mm. If you can't, there is not a global currency. You must ask fundamental questions. So my, mm -hmm. my fear is that there will be continuous struggle, uncertainties for ESA because of enormous accumulated weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But it will only create more problems for the world, more problems for the, uh, in, for the world. And then I don't see any way in which U.S. can be replaced immediately. I'm not saying some distance after 100 years, 200 years. Mm -hmm. I also heard about people saying, you know, 100 years, China can Maybe. 100 years is not a small time. Mm -hmm. Very big time now. So, uh, you know, even Definitely India... Definitely not in the next hundred years, I think. I take your point, sir. It is too entrenched. Hey, like the English language, uh, the dollar as a currency is also deeply entrenched. But uh, India is trying experiments of rupee trade with some countries. Uh, you think uh, that's at least some kind of a, uh, you know, a relief when uh, the dollar dominance becomes too much? I think there are some lessons... For, for ourselves and also for China in the recent years. Mm. So there may be some lessons, but they may not be relevant per, 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 at this juncture. But my, fe my feeling is, first of all, you should we should assess how many banks have availed the facility given by the government. Mm. The government says, let's go and have to do it. We may be keen to do it, but how many are willing to do it? Mm. How many banks are operating? I think in these matters, you have to operate at two levels. One is at the principles and philosophical and historical level. The other is numbers, numbers. What's happening? Under what circumstances? Uh, is, is it, are we giving too many concessions to the banks who are willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing that? Mm 
Mm. So I think it should be strategic, it should not be confined. Strategic and strategic value, operations, and the numbers. Okay. I think it's take, my own feeling is it's that it's not easy to jump mm. in all these important matters that quickly. If we do, I'm very happy. Dr. Reddy, let me come to the Indian situation. At this point in time, do you think we are, uh, you know, tackling the growth versus inflation dilemma properly? We have increased rates continuously. Uh, what's your sense? Uh, do you think our growth will do well or, I mean, what are we getting right and what are we getting wrong? I think in the short term, we seem to be getting many things right, Amma. Mm -hmm. In the short term, particularly because the rest of the world is in serious trouble. Mm. The rest of the world is in such terrible trouble, such serious trouble. And definitely in the short term, in, in view of our own capacities built over the years of managing short term troubles. I think we are doing pretty well in the short term. On the medium to long term, I would rather have a wait and see and reserve my judgment. Okay, what, what would your worries be? Would your worries be uh, that the uh, economic growth ah. cannot proceed at this pace? Would your worries be about inequality? Uh, what what uh, broadly are the worries in the medium term? Uh, at my age, I cannot afford to worry about anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, is it, I cannot is it worry about is I it, want to be peaceful and having my coffee uh, and ice cream. Okay. Is it inequality that worries in you? In that order. Uh, is it inequality that would worry you? Uh, if you ask me, if you ask me, if you have to, if I have to pick up one, just one, just one. Okay. If you have to pick up one, I'm slightly concerned, if not worried, about the interstate and state center relations. Okay. States. The importance of states and the state governments, the functioning of the governments, so critical uh, to the people at large. Perhaps that, I mean, it will where it will go, but I'm not sure. These are all very difficult things. Okay. Uh, but I leave it there. Uh, I, okay. I can't afford to worry more than that. Oh, okay. Fair enough, sir. Uh, well, uh, f for the Indian banking system itself, is there any word of advice to the Reserve Bank? Do you think they've done a good job in terms of regulation? We've not had the problems that others have had. I'm, I'm not, I'm quite happy with the cleaning up of the RBI bank, bank sheet that Das and his company have done, Aruguram Rajan and Das, etc. I, I think I'm quite comfortable with the overall framework. But the point is when the result comes, mm. they're writing off 90 percent now. Okay. The yes. fellow who is taking over is going to take 10 percent. Yeah. So was it something wrong with the original valuation or something wrong with the new valuation? Okay. See, I don't think in other countries the bankruptcy process results in realization of 5% of the value. Nah? Mm. I don't know the statistics have been out of touch. But if I were in the Reserve Bank, the first thing I will do is I'll collect information about the realization in all countries, mm. or at least important countries, find out what is the realization and why. Are we below or are we above? That will give me a comfort in regard to the work of the legislation. Otherwise not. And how quickly we do that. Okay. How quickly and how, how much. I think that's the only thing. Since you asked me, mm -hmm. without thinking, I think I spoke from my tears. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So don't take me too seriously. Okay. If the numbers don't jibe. Okay. No, no. There is a that's worry one. that uh, a large number of loans are getting written off. And the realizations from the IBC process also has not been very satisfactory. It was excellent initially. Uh, when we could sell fine buyers for large steel plants, but increasingly both in terms of time and uh, time taken and in terms of the uh, uh, monies realized, there is a problem. Just a final question on the growth inflation uh, uh, balance. Uh, any advice to the Reserve Bank or the Monetary Policy Committee? Uh, do you think the stress that inflation should be brought down towards 4% is the right uh, angle that the Reserve Bank should take? See, in the, I, I'm not fully aware of the whole picture, but uh, recently I was seeing uh, 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 mails which are being exchanged between top economic uh, economists in the country, in the country, in the government. Mm. There is a simple feeling that the economies can grow basically by dem stimulating demand. Mm. But my fear is I think we are neglecting the savings part. That's neglected because household savings are taken as a residue in some theory. Mm. Household savings are residual. Mm. My submission is the character of household savings 
don't underestimate its importance. First, magnitudinally, household impact as well as impact. Particularly, household financial saving. Mm. If you don't have enough household financial saving, there's no financial way to cover investment. Okay. And secondly, if you go on having negative interest rates for 10 years mm. to stimulate demand, where is the money for investment? Okay. Today, because of the peculiar circumstances, you may have a moderate current account deficit. Current account deficit may be moderate today, in extraordinary circumstances. Imagine a normal graph. In the normal graph, it's very difficult to sustain this type of deficit. So I would say, as the government of India and the state governments are emphasizing, attend to productivity, attend to quality of education, and also attend to household savings. That will be a finance and of investment. In, you see, just digitalization will not produce productivity. Digitalization will produce but only if it's added to education, and it is also added to quality of, uh, okay. of productivity. Productivity, education, digitalization, together, not one. Okay. So I think we are, we are almost on a dangerous ground there. Mm. Sorry to say that. Fair point, sir. But that's a very big one that you're giving us, that uh, the uh, system needs to concentrate on household financial savings per se. That's a big one, a big lesson coming from you, aside from the fact that uh, you would worry that centre-state relations are not in ship shape. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Reddy, for joining us and giving us your thoughts on a variety of issues. That's it on this edition of Indianomics. Thank you for watching.